welcome to another episode of Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This series is following our tiny house project from the early stages through to completion and beyond. In this episode, Jake wires in the electrical panel. I'm ready to wire in the panel here. There's quite a few circuits, as you can see, and it's mostly because I'm an electrician and I put in quite a bit of stuff and also separated it out quite a bit. And it just means we have more circuits to deal with at the panel. Uh, I've got all the breakers. Uh, the different types and the right amount. There's um, 13 circuits in total. And I've also done a rough calculation on balancing the two legs of the system. And this is only applicable when we're bringing in 240 volts, which is both legs of the system. But it can be important because if we're being fed off a 30 amp breaker and one of the legs draws over 30 amps, even if the other leg is drawing hardly anything, say 5 amps or something, um, the leg that's drawing over 30 amps will trip the whole breaker and shut off the whole system. And that means that we would be exceeding the capacity of the breaker before we're getting anywhere near the capacity of the system as a whole. So it's, it's better to balance it out um, so that that kind of thing doesn't happen. So I've just done an estimate on what I'm expecting the different circuits to draw and then come up with a configuration of the breakers and where the circuits need to go to onto like which breakers to uh, get a roughly balanced system uh, and that way we're hoping to not have that kind of problem. The breakers are just push-on breakers. There's uh, little blades on the electrical bus and then little teeth in the breakers and then on the other end there's sort of a little hook and then a channel uh, on the, the case of the panel. So that hooks into that channel so that it can lever like that and then you just push the uh, teeth down onto the blade. Sometimes it's tight, which is uh, a good thing. <laughs> so it's biting really hard down onto the blade of the bus, so that makes the good electrical connection there. We've got three physically different types of breakers, uh, but only two different capacities of breakers, 15 amps and 20 amps. The 20 amps are mostly for the kitchen counter plugs and then one outside plug. And then the 15s are for just everything else. Um, this here is one breaker slot. And this is just a single 20 amp in that spot. But Eaton, which is this brand, makes breakers uh, where you can get two minis in a single slot, which just allows you to have more circuits in the same number of slots. So we've got uh, five 20 amp circuits, we've got two minis and a single. And then for these 15s, you can see how this is tied together across uh, two sort of slots. And this is all one big chunk, these are fused together, it's like a double, double wide breaker. And it's because um, each one of these uh, rows is alternating phases, so it's phase one, phase two, phase one, phase two, and the tied in the center is just a way of having the two different phases. So there's a couple um, runs where we have a three wire that I talked about having two circuits coming off of, and we had to make sure that they were on separate uh, phases. So we'd be putting the red wire and the black wire of that three wire across this divider to make sure that that three wires getting both phases and not the same phase. If we put it on here and here or here and then went somewhere over to here with the red and black, something like that, we could end up on the same phase and that would be the situation that we don't want because it could create a dangerous um, amount of current flowing. But that's pretty much an uh, overview of the, the breakers that we've got here. I'll also note that new breakers uh, should always come in the tripped position and you'll have to turn them off and then on um, to actually use them. But uh, if they're fresh out of the box, they should always be in the tripped position and that's kind of an indication that they're new and unused.
So my uh, process for doing a panel is to transfer all the labeling up beyond where the cable is going to enter the panel so I can reference it later. Then I can strip all the outer jacket off, get the uh, wires in, separate all the bonds out and then tuck them in uh, into the corner and get them onto the bus and you can put two uh, wires down under a single screw if there's a limited number of spots here and then separate out the neutrals, do the same kind of thing, dress them over, get them under the bus. I usually try to put um, one per screw, but you can double them up again if you need to. And then uh, using the labels from up here, I'll get them under the appropriate breakers, the uh, hot wires. And then after that, I'll transfer that labeling to the panel schedule, like the little legend here for what's what, and then this can get covered and I never need to see these labels again because I've got it referenced here. You can see I've left loops. Uh, for example, this one I've come down past the breaker and then come back up to it and pretty much done that everywhere. And that's just to add a little extra length to work with in the unlikely event that something would have to get moved. Sometimes when you add something, you'll find that you need to move a breaker to make it work. And then if you don't have the wire to make that happen, it can be a problem. So even though we're not anticipating anything like that with this, uh, it's just like a habit that I have. After finishing working in a panel, I like to go through and just check that everything's tight. Um, like for example, I put these uh, main conductors down and tightened them down quite a while ago. And then I was in here moving stuff around. And if it's shifted, um, I don't want anything to be loose. And also little screws, uh, I want to make sure everything's uh, cinched down. So I'm going to go through and check it all. And also up here, like these connectors, um, check that I didn't miss. Uh, tightening one of them down because once this is all closed, I'm not going to have access to uh, to tweak anything after that. So I'm going to do that now. These panel doors come with these knockouts for uh, each of the breaker spaces. So I've got to remove them all for where there's breakers, which in our case is everywhere but this one. And I just use my linesman pliers and grab it and just twist it out until it breaks out. Like. Ah. 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 Like that. Just gracefully like that. So I'm going to close this up for now and we'll just have to take it off when we put on you know, the wall here basically. And uh, I'm not uh, looking for the screws because I put them in the little holes here a long time ago so that I would know where they were. So <laughs> it's a common thing to lose these screws. So um, it's a pro tip for you right there. So it's gonna go on like so and that'll be that. If you want to see some of our previous videos, click on the preview tiles, and subscribe if you want to follow our progress. You can also visit our website here.